Hi guys, welcome back to Ramya's World. Today we're going to be talking about K-pop bands, uh, which is the short for Korean pop. When I was growing up in the 90s, we had boy bands like, you know, Backstreet Boys, uh, Take That, Boy Zone. Uh, we had the Spice Girls, but there was nothing called the K-pop, which has become very famous now. And I know about them only because my daughter listens, uh, listens to some K-pop uh, bands. There are about 370 cake pop bands and you are a fan if you know, you know, if you can name 30 of them and I can just name two of them and that's because my daughter likes those two bands. Uh, one is BTS, the other one is Blackpink. So anyways, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how the cake pop culture uh, came into place and, you know, there's something called the Korean wave um, and, you know, about how the industry works. So my daughter has been telling me to do a video on K-pop. So this one's for you, sweetheart. Uh, so K-pop stands for Korean pop and it originates from South Korea. Uh, so it started in the 1990s, but it was uh, popularized in 2000. And, uh, you know, the word that they used back then was Gayo and now it's replaced uh, with uh, K-pop. So Gayo means domestic uh, South Korean music, but now it's famous as K-pop, like everybody knows what's K-pop. So I found, you know, looked it up and found all this information on Wiki. I'll have the link below. Uh, so the modern culture of K-pop, you know, the idol culture began with a boy band, uh, which started in 1996. It was called H.O.T. And they started the subculture of, uh, you know, fandoms, which had, uh, you know, teens and young adults listening to them. And then in 2003, another group called the TVXQ and the BOA, um, you know, she was called the queen of K-pop. They started a new generation of K-pop idols, you know, so they went to the neighboring market of Japan and then Asia. And now because of social media, a K-pop is a worldwide phenomena because of the Korean TV shows. And it's called the Korean wave where you have right now the K-pop as a 3.7 billion pound industry. And, you know, there are super fans of K-pop, uh, they call it a sang. So these super fans follow their, their boy bands that they like and they book the flights on the same uh, flight that the band is traveling. So they are hardcore and they dress and they try to mimic all the dance steps that they do. So it's a huge um, fan following that the current K-pop groups have today. So the French Institute National Dell Audiovisual defines K-pop as a fusion of synthesized music, sharp dance routines, and you know, using fashionable and colorful outfits with songs that typically consist of a mix, one or two mix of hip hop, rock, R&B, and electronic uh, music genre. So to be part of this K-pop band, you know, the kids audition as early as when they're 10 years old and they undergo rigorous training and which lasts from, you know, six months to 10 years before they finally make their debut. And they are all uh, live together and, uh, you know, they have training centers. They have uh, three uh, big um, entertainment companies in South Korea. One of them is called the SM. The other one is the YG and the y, uh, JYP. So these are the three huge, uh, you know, Korean management uh, K-pop companies. So they uh, take all these kids under their training thing and they train them over years before you know they're trained uh, and you know they are debuted so it's a very rigorous training and it's almost very robotic and which has the robotic kind of training that they have it's been criticized by the western world but uh, you know the kids do it um, because they see the stardom and the fandom that they get all the k-pops band once they become famous get but it is um it's been uh, criticized uh there have been issues with how you know the contract is binding for all these kids to be a part of them because they have uh you know because according to uh, in 2012 the wall street journal reported that the cost of training one korean idol under the sm entertainment company was dollar three million so the K-pop is, um, you know, a cultural uh, product. So it's characterized by a mix of uh, Western music and it also uses African-American influences like R&B, hip-hop, and they have jazz, they have techno, they have disco. 
along with the Korean aspect. So now the Korean aspect is the performance that they have in these bands. So that includes uh, synchronized dance steps. They have formation changes and they have something called point choreography that consists of hooking and repetitive key movements. And now the modern uh, K-pop bands, they also use a lot of English phrases. So they do have the Korean language, uh, you know, lyrics in it, but they do include a lot of English phrases also. And there's a lot of criticism of the way uh, the practices are in the K-pop industry. One of them is corruption. Like, you know, there are, uh, you know, instances where people have been um, bribing, um, you know, entertainment companies uh, so that they could give a chance to a um, you know, budding or aspiring talent so that they get a chance to be, uh, you know, in front of the audience or at a Korean TV show. So that's one where there's a lot of corruption involved. Another thing for which uh, the K-pop industry is criticized is for the poor living conditions. These kids have uh, very restrictive contracts and they are, uh, you know, uh, BBC reported them as called slave contracts. Uh, you know, uh, kids go to this uh, schools called the k-pop schools and they have you know restriction on what they eat because uh, they have strict diets because they have to be in the certain uh, weight range so they are weight morning and night and then the weight is reported to the head trainer and you know some of you know uh, i even read that sometimes you know if a girl or a boy has a good body but an ugly face they just use plastic surgery to fix it. So they have, so BBC called this uh, something like a slave uh, contracts because they are binding and they do whatever is listed on the contract. And so literally they are slaves for the time that they're training under that uh, management, you know, the entertainment management company. So which can be anywhere from six months to 10 years before they debut and they may or may not uh, you know, be famous. Another thing for which the K-pop industry is criticized is for sexualization of both the male and female idols, you know, where uh, they are pressurized into wearing revealing clothing or dancing provocatively, especially uh, in case of minors, you know, because they start very early. They're like in their teens when they start, uh, you know, debuting. Uh, so though uh, K-pop compared to the Western popular music has less, you know, sex or drugs or aggressive behavior, but and it is supposed to be a parent-friendly uh, you know, bands that you know parents uh, do like their kids to listen to and watch, but they still have been criticized for that because these are young kids, and you know because they have huge fandoms, you know, like following them, they want them to have a good image of you know the kids following them sponsorship relationship is another one that uh has been you know criticized in the k-pop industry which i think is in another you know the other media industry too but in this case you know well the individuals sponsor the idol and you know they send them to training and you know give them you know gifts or you know get them promise them to get uh, media coverage and in return for sexual favors uh, so that's another type of exploitation that these young kids face uh, you know in their you know in their effort to get into the k-pop uh, bandwagon and one of the biggest things that i found uh, was very shocking was the um, you know, the mental health aspect of uh, these young kids who are trying to be, you know, huge pop stars, K-pop uh, bands, and how, uh, you know, the pressure of being that puts a lot of um, anxiety into them and, you know, the pressure of being the best and, you know, staying there on the top. Because like I said, there are like 370 K-pop uh, bands but then only uh, there are few who have huge fan followings. So like I was reading about uh, the musician Park Hyung of uh, Block B. Uh, he says that you start living your life with anxiety right after your debut. And in another case, uh, Suga, who's one of the famous, uh, one of the band members of the famous group BTS. He started saying that, you know, the anxiety he experienced as a trainee, it continued even after, you know, BTS became an established uh, K-pop band. So, you know, the anxiety is there and they have to deal with it. And they feel that, you know, it would get better once they are an established artist. But 
uh, you know, some of the interviews I've read, it, they are like, no, you know, the loneliness is still there and you still feel the pressure because you have to constantly be at it because one slip and that's it. You are going to be an overnight failure. And I was just reading about uh, depression and the suicide among K-pop group uh, members. So in 1996, Charles Park who was also known as COG uh, Won. He died of a self-inflicted harm at the age of 19, just before the release of a second album. And there was another uh, kid who was called Kim John Hume. Uh, he was the main vocalist of a boy band called Shiny and he died at 27 years and you know he had uh, talked about his uh, history uh, where, and his battle with depression but you know how it felt lonely uh, though uh, being there on the top and being one of the you know best followed bands they do feel that loneliness and the pressure to keep up with it. And just a couple of days back, I read this news about this uh, K-pop star who was a former um, member of the band called uh, FX. Uh, she at 25 years took her own life and, you know, I was just reading onto why she did that and it was like cyberbullying. She just could not put up with it. She was bullied for calling older men uh, by their first name. Uh, she was bullied for being drunk. She was bullied for wearing um, a braless t-shirts and she was bullied for, you know, advocating her views on the newly revised uh, abortion rights in South Korea. So I read this article on why uh, Sally took her own life. It was all about the trolling that she has uh, you know, she had to face because of uh, the conservative thinking in South Korea where, uh, you know, in spite of, uh, you know, stardom, if you are a female and you're a celebrity, there are certain norms that you need to follow and breaking those norms gets a uh, troll. So I guess it reached a point where she could not, uh, you know, take it. And, you know, it was very different because on Instagram, uh, looks like she had a very colorful and a very happy life and she has just released her album as a solo artist so it was a huge shock for the fans that you know just a couple of days later she took her life recently on a tv show a korean tv show called the night of hate comments sally was asked about uh, how she feels her life has turned out and she said that my life is actually empty so i feel that i'm lying to everyone but pretending to be happy on the outside and then you know um, another show a host asked how would you like to be remembered and she said that for, you know when i first posted the picture of me braless there were many different reactions i could have been frightened and i could have uh, hidden away but i did not because uh, you know it looks like she was very brave about it and she did not give in to the trolls and I wanted people's prejudice to disappear and I wish people looked at me and would think, well, someone like that existed and, you know, just accept the difference. So I guess, uh, you know, she was just trying to make a difference in her own way and, uh, you know, trying to revolt or rebel in her own way because uh, South Korea is still conservative in the way they think and a woman does not have, you know, all the rights uh, like a... A man celebrity would so i guess i'm going to end my video uh, for today at that but uh, you know like how it looks on the outside uh, the k-pop uh, bands or the korean wave it looks all nice and fancy on the outside but there are uh, you know hidden uh, things in the industry and you know all the stress and the struggles uh, these band members go through just to put themselves out there and for all the fame uh, they do have at the end but they you know sacrifice a lot to get there and in the process some people do end up just taking their own lives for it's good when it's a healthy um you know profession where you know you are able to enjoy what you're doing but when it's not uh it's hard but anyways here's a song from one of the uh you know the k-pop bands called blackpink it's called do 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 and it's one of my favorite because i've been listening to it quite often when my daughter plays it enjoy <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
that's it for today guys like always live in the moment enjoy every moment kyuki kal ho no and i'll see you guys back next week but please do uh, you know follow me on social media at instagram facebook and twitter and you know share my youtube channel with your family and friends and i'll see you guys back next week bye love you all